Hi, welcome to Nursing School Masterclass. My name is Dr. Jamie Adam, and I used to be in nursing school, and I remember just how stressful it was. And now I'm a nursing professor. So I want to share with you the strategies that I see help my students, the things that I wish someone had told me when I was in nursing school. And in fact, I have a free workshop on how to study. It's only 30 minutes of your time and it'll give you all the tools you need so you know you can study with confidence and get A's on nursing exams. Tonight, I'm gonna to be talking about concept mapping, and I am a huge fan of concept maps. I think they are a great way to really learn and process information and really be able to, to get in and understand those complex nursing topics and be able to recall them on exams. So tonight, I wanna to show you an example of a concept map that I created. Now, I'm no artist, it took me about two hours to create this, and I'm sure that, you know, if you have any art skills at all, you could make it look better. But I want you to see what it looks like when you take a ton of information and you pare it down into one page. It is possible. So I'm going to walk you through the concept map that I created about heart failure tonight. Okay, so you can see this map of heart failure that I created, um, and you can see that here I tried to draw the heart, um, the circulation of uh, the blood flow in the heart, and then of course these are supposed to be lungs, and this is supposed to be a liver, um, but you can see what's, what's great about something like this is that just having a simple visual can help you keep the information straight from the other topics that you're learning. So by putting a heart on the page, it helps jog my memory that, oh yes, this was my concept map I created about heart failure. And at the top, I give a little information about what heart failure is. Well, it's a weak heart. This heart is unable to perfuse blood flow to all of the body like it should. The organs are suffering, the tissues are suffering, and that's a problem. We also see with heart failure an issue with volume overload. The heart's not able to keep up with the demands, with the volume demands in the body. Over here, I have listed the causes and the risks of heart failure, really circling the things that are most likely to cause heart failure, knowing that there's, there's in, in reality, multiple causes, but these are the two most common, so heart attack and uncontrolled high blood pressure. Over here on my map, I have an area where I'm gonna put some key patho. What's happening in the body? What is, what is going on here? The lack of perfusion means that the heart rate goes up to try to compensate and push blood through the body faster. We have lethargy, fatigue, that patient is tired. With volume overload, we have symptoms of weight gain and rails in the lungs, shortness of breath, edema or swelling, especially in the lower extremities, and even difficulty breathing at night. So what happens if heart failure is left untreated? What is the big deal? Well, we know that heart failure is a chronic condition. It's progressive. It gets worse over time, especially if we do nothing and if we haven't in any way addressed the risk factors. So we need to treat heart failure. We know that it can lead to heart attack, to dangerous arrhythmias, or even eventually death. So when it comes to treating it, we've got some options and I wanted to make sure I included the most common or the key or the primary treatment for heart failure. So I've, I've listed, okay, what is the purpose of the treatment? Well, the goal is that we need to slow the progression of the disease by decreasing the workload on the heart. And so we have medications to help with that. And so I've listed the ones that we talked about in class. And then also the idea is to try to prolong quality of life. So what can we do for these patients to try to help them have the best quality of life possible? So that's a lot of what our treatment's focused on. And then we have some teaching and monitoring that needs to be done. So I've included that over here. 
Um, you know, what are we doing as the nurse? Well, we're doing a lot of assessment and management of their symptoms. We're trying to avoid exacerbations of heart failure. We're doing a lot to manage medications. Medication compliance is a big deal. You can see I put some asterisks here to remind myself compliance is so important. Um, diet compliance, we've got a special diet that our heart failure patients need to be on. And then we've got some labs that we're monitoring. And these labs can affect the way the medications work and can affect the risk of adverse effects. So we are always monitoring those also. So then we come to the evaluation piece, which is a really important part of understanding a, a disease condition and its treatment. We're really thinking about how do we know treatment's working? So how will we know the patient's getting better or that the treatment's working? Well, we're looking for their symptoms to improve. We're looking for their heart rate to to be within normal, for their energy to go up, um, for them to have some weight loss, especially fluid in the beginning, um, and then really to stabilize. We're looking for clear lung sounds, lack of shortness of breath. We want the swelling to go down in their extremities. If they have jugular venous distension, we want that to go down. We want their output, urinary output to, to increase to show us that they're getting rid of some of that extra fluid. That's what we want. And then we also want to make sure the patient is tolerating the treatment okay. So they're, they're taking all these medications, but how are they doing with it? What kind of adverse effects are they having? So I can't list 100 adverse effects for every drug, but I did highlight the things that are most common or most serious, the things that we really focused in on in class to give myself that reminder. And then sometimes, it, depending on what you're learning, if you have a hard time remembering signs and symptoms, it's, it's a great thing to include in your concept map. So up here, I reminded myself, what are left-sided heart failure symptoms? What are right-sided heart failure symptoms? What does that look like? So this isn't, this, this isn't rewriting all 46 PowerPoint slides. This is reviewing the PowerPoint slides and pulling out the pieces that help me get the big picture for the topic that I'm learning. Because in any presentation, there's gonna be background information. There might be several slides on risk factors. There might be several slides on the path though. And in the end, I can't commit to memory 46 PowerPoint slides and you can't either. So instead of trying to memorize 46 PowerPoint slides or trying to create 46 flashcards with all of the PowerPoint information on them, by creating a concept map like this, this is a great way to condense a ton of information by really just putting the key points on your map so that you have the big overall picture. And, um, and what I love about something like this is once you have this created, now you have your study tool. So this is what you study from when you're preparing for your exam. You can also use this for your final exam that's comprehensive. So it's great to, to collect a portfolio of concept maps that you can keep and refer back to that really just give you the nuggets, the bite size, the, the main point or the big picture about what you're learning. So I'm curious if you have questions about this, if you've tried concept mapping before, what you thought, it's something that you have to practice. And sometimes it, it takes a, a few versions. So before this version, I created a, a my first draft was kind of messy. It was all over the place. It was me trying to figure out, okay, what important information do I want to put on my map? And so it was kind of messy. So what you're seeing is the second version. This is me, you know, redoing that first draft and saying, okay, how would I want to organize the information so that I can keep it straight? So I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know what questions you have. I really wanna know um, if you're watching this video on the replay, I wanna know if you've tried concept mapping, what you thought, um, and if you found it helpful for remembering information on your exam. So thanks so much for joining me. Again, I just wanna remind you, if you need some help with figuring out how to study in nursing school, check out my free workshop. And otherwise, I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye for now.